Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never role played before journey into a world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes are in the middle of a battle with Archibald Tingler and a mind controlled butthole. Can Quinny figure out how to use Alan's gift from the future? Can Juniper and Paul Carr survive a battle with the symbiote? Will Butthole run out of clever ideas and be forced to actually kill one of his friends? Find out next on Dum Dums and Dragons. And that's like such a beacon of hope for Quinny to see Alan again, especially in this time of need. So he's like, Alan, and then her hand gets severed off. And he's like, ah! <laughs> He'll head over to the hand with the vial and the parchment and examine it. Quinny, you go over, the hand is still twitching, and you feel kind of like some bumps in your vestments and poking out of the collar of your shirt is Billy Fingers, who skitters down you and uh, <laughs> wraps fingers with the hand longingly. So Alan looks like she scribbled a, a very quick note. Quinny and Butthole, I don't know why you're fighting, but whatever the reason, just know that we're still friends. <laughs> Which is nice, but also like okay. strange. At least she's okay. So that's something for you. Can you please roll me an insight check? Just a four. There's a metallic rectangle that looks similar to the technology you saw in Martha's lab back in the prison. You're not quite sure how to use those. There's also a strange injectable vial that seems to be with it. I put all that in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I put Alan's hand in my pocket too, like along with Billy Fingers. Cool, like, yep. I'm hoping to see her again. <laughs> yep, one day. Um, and I think about your friends. I look over at Butthole. We were soul bonded for a moment so that he could help bring me into like my true body. I know my friends. And I shout out across the room, even though I'm terrified. It's like I can't directly engage with this guy now. But I yell out, butthole. Yeah, I'll look over. I point at the creature that used to be your dad and I say, that's not your dad anymore. Hello, new friend. Yeah. <laughs> and I nod. That makes sense to me. This checks out. Butthole, can you roll me a wisdom save? 11. That checks out. Mentally, it's starting to clear up a bit, but still you feel compelled in your very bones. And it's strange because you always assumed that it was purely your father's speech that commanded you. But somehow that last message rings true. And unfortunately, you're still compelled to murder all your friends. Possibly forever now, because <laughs> if he's dead, no yeah, one's undoing a, it. That's a real problem for me. Which brings us to the Spearman. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Juniper, a giant sort of symbiote monster, stands before you, glowering at you with hatred. What do you do? Well, let's just try to fucking divine smite this thing again, because it's obviously demonic. They'll do something to it. So I'm going to do a spinning hit, or just like hit it once, and then using the force of my turn to ram it into the creature's chest. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And I will use divine smite again at level three on the first one. Uh, <laughs> it's the sound of success. Ten to hit. Absolutely not. <laughs> and then that is 23 to hit. Barely. It but, does but hit. That's 23 okay. does? All Jesus. Right. Four damage. So you, you swing around, first hit misses, you use your momentum, swing your sword with all your might, you hit it, and it seems to almost sink into the side of the creature, mm -hmm. and the tendrils just force it away. It, it's like you slashed at rubber. So... You get the sense it took some damage, but likely not very much. Then I'll use a bonus shove of my shield to push it away. So, Laura, if I understand correctly, you're using the feat of Shieldmaster to That's get correct. a bonus shove. Cool. So what that means is we are going to roll an opposed strength check, or uh, I can choose acrobatics if I so desire, but I really do not. <laughs> uh, and we'll see what happens. So go ahead and roll, and All then right. know the result. That's a 10. I also got a 10. So we're going to say that we remain locked up Fuck. close. So epic, though. Shield to ball tendrons. <laughs> <laughs> he just thrusts his groin forward. Yeah. And just, with the shield. There's wrap around the but shield. There are just tugging. tendrils coming off his nuts. Like, he's, he's, he's all tendrilled up. Playing the space that we've created. This we're guy's We're focusing nuts. on nut tendrils right now, Tom. <laughs> we don't have time for the other ones. Yeah. For the record, still terrifying and could absolutely kill us all. <laughs> Dear Wizards of the Coast, I have a new monster for you. His name is Nut Tendrils. Okay, cool. So that was Juniper. Butthole, you're up. Okay, I still need to kill all my friends. However, Quinny did make an excellent point that this is a new friend, which means I can kill this monster. Does that check yep. out? Yep. Yes. Thank God my dad isn't here to tell me not to do this. <laughs> so I, I'm going right at this big old fucker. Moonhammer comes over and takes a swing because I'm imagining this demon is not of Moonhammer. The spiritual hammer takes its shot at those nuts. Am I right? <laughs> We've learned our priority. 
That's an 11. So it's been so long, but Moonhammer just flips that hammer around, just pokes Archibald in the butthole. And I mean, that is a great way to piss off someone who loves the God of War. Not terribly helpful in this scenario, but I am so relieved to just not be murdering Quinny, <laughs> which I have way too much memory of in my body that I will also launch myself at this fucking demon and just yell, I love you, friend, and go for it. 23. Yep, that barely hits, but hits. And I will swing around and take this second one with the power of Moonhammer. It's like a Tasmanian devil just spinning with the hammer. <laughs> like you're like the mask right now. Yes. Yeah. And that is a nat 20 on the second one. Okay, yes, that will hit. Okay, so on the first hit, 18 damage. Okay. And then on the second one, 17 damage. What kind of damage type are you doing? In the first one, 12 regular plus 6 radiant damage. Okay. And then on the second one, it would be all regular damage. So the creature kind of shrieks as the radiant hits, but you get the sense that the rest of the damage was not as effective as you'd hoped. Okay. Which brings us to Archibald. So with burning hatred in the creature's eyes, it's going to attack Juniper. Crap. So its arms become massive bloody uh -huh. blades. It swings thrice at you. Oh, man. No. Holy shit. So the first one is 25 to hit. Yeah. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> 19 to hit on the second one. My AC is 19. And an at 20 on the third. Fuck. Uh, oh, so man. just three mighty slices because it's got hatred. It adds additional damage to oh, those. Oh, shit. So you, my friend, are going to take... Come on, come on. He's rolling so many fucking dice. Oh, man, he's still rolling dice. They're all D4s. They're, they're all, all D4s. Just ones. remember, they're all ones and they're all on D4s. Jesus. Okay, so... When even the DM is saying Jesus, that's when you know, okay. Yeah. I'm having to do more math than I've had to do in an age. We're too afraid to appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting on a calculator. It's easier. Come on, man. <laughs> he has ah. had so many ones, guys. There's so oh. many ones. Yeah. It's always the fucking tanglers. So he hits you for 65 points of damage. Oh I'm, I'm down for the count. Yowza. So that just goes to zero, right? Because yeah. that's not... Potatoes! Yeah. I'm going to say as the third hit hits you, it's like Brad Pitt getting KO'd in Snatch, where you yeah. just kind of like fly up in slow motion as you do. Potatoes features melt away and you drift back into moss. Mm -hmm. It screeches in rage and delight, and it looks to Polka, who was also trying to hit it in the nuts. Yeah. You get the sense, butthole, that it's still actively ignoring you, and that is its turn. Swords, they're gone, so they are off the initiative order. Which brings us to top of the round, the halberd guy. He's still here. He's in the back corner, but he stood with his lord. I have rarely seen a dumber person. Wow. Well, <laughs> he's going to awkwardly edge forward with a handout, kind of like, I'm going to touch a dragon or a T-Rex. Or a nut tendril. Or a nut tendril thing. Yeah. And you can see his hands start to glow as if he's going to cast Cure Wounds. However, once he gets within range to kind of do the touch spell, the effect still occurs, but he is consumed screaming by the tendrils that just kind of pull him into the back. And you can tell that it's gaining healing from eating him, not from his magics. Top of the round, Polka. Okay. Uh, that's a lot to take in there. Good. <laughs> I just yell, our new friend is more vulnerable to magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do that um, <laughs> for lack of other options. I mean, this guy is massive and strong, so trying to like grapple him or pin him to the table is not really going to do anything. Plus, he's got tendrils. If you want to try and do a grapply thing, I'll let you try and grapple him to give other people advantage. Yeah, just because I'm unclear as to how much damage I can actually do to him with conventional weapons. What I'd like to do is I'd like to pin him down so at least he's focused on me entirely so he doesn't go after the two characters who are still standing who could potentially damage him. Cool. So can you roll me an opposed strength check, please? I sure can. 21. I got a four. Yay. So I think it's a lot of you grabbing and pulling at symbiote, punching at things, and it's just actively distracting and annoying because the symbiote has to keep actively moving your hands away and shit. So yeah, I'm going to say advantage on the next two attacks against the symbiote. What do you yell as you windmill arm your way through this? This is for you, Timothy Dalton! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, Quinny, at the end of last round, did you manage to shake off your frightened? 15. You see Polka, your new friend, literally throw himself at this thing that <laughs> literally just consumed a man from close touch. Yeah. You're like, if he can be brave, I can be brave too. Plus, Butthole's still in a bad spot. So, right, right. time to okay. Quinny the fuck up. 
I think with this new moment of clarity, I want to get a better look at the shit I picked up. The hand was fucked up. The note really helped, but I don't know what this other shit is. How do you want to try and suss out what this is? I know you as Tyler know what this is, but in terms of Quinny... I think it would be an investigation because okay. it's, yep. it's, he's sort of like detail-oriented, like picking a lock, casing a joint. In addition to that, I have seen the injector gun yes, apparatus before have. when we're juicing goblins. So I'm assuming that's an automatically like checks out for me. For one point of stress... Mm -hmm. Which is literally you remembering that in combat. You recognize the injector gun. Like, you've, you've seen these things. You realize it's injectable. I'm going to give you advantage on your investigation okay. for that point of stress. Because it doesn't look like the goblin venom. Right, okay. Plus four is 17. You're looking at the three things you have. Mm -hmm. You recognize that the syringe is some kind of injectable thing. I'm going to say, as you're quickly looking at stuff, the note is just a note. You can't mm -hmm. see any magic to it. The slab, I'm going to say you managed to turn on, but it's tons of scrolling text and stuff. Oh, okay. It's like a data thing. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like some kind of strange magical Some kind of scroll tablet. that literally scrolls somehow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Beyond that, you're not entirely sure what these things are. That said, I'm going to give you one success towards figuring out the solution to this. If you can get three successes, you can figure out specifically what the syringe does. Okay. And those can be done in a variety of ways, but based on what you've got, yeah, one success for starting to suss together what this could possibly do. I think for my movement, I'm not terrified of this guy anymore, but I see what he can do and I know that I'm in a bad, bad way and I saw Juniper go down. I got to hang back. Also, just for you to think about between now and your next turn, you know that Manny has great knowledge and could possibly be consulted about such things. Fuck. Okay. But there's always a cost. Yep. So that's Quinny. Juniper, please roll me a death save. Of course. 19. Okay. So you're still good. Butthole, you're up. Okay. I still have to kill all of my friends, but I've also been trained by my father to think tactically. There is no goddamn way I can kill this big friend on my own. So knowing that I have to kill everyone in this room, can I heal another friend I'm sure I could kill later to help me kill the big friend? You can roll me a wisdom save at disadvantage. Why even roll again? Uh, <laughs> Ten. Unfortunately, no. He's taught you to think tactically, but you've seen Moss mm -hmm. before. Yeah, yes. So you recognize Moss as a friend. So reviving them would be counterintuitive to your ultimate goal of killing all your friends. Okay, so instead, I'm taking a swing at the big friend again with the hammer of moon hammer. So doing a little butthole poke, and mm -hmm. then we're going to turn around, and it's trying to do a swing down and up into the taint. It's actually going behind oh, okay. the balls. The balls mm. are too tendrily. They can defend themselves, <laughs> so we're trying to go nearby but yep. vulnerable. If this guy pulls out taint tendrils, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done. It's true of both Polka and Dave. <laughs> And I have advantage on this one, right? This is one of the Yes, you do. Yep. That is 20. 20 doesn't hit. Sorry. There we go. Moonhammer misses the taint. It happens to the best of us. Instead of taking a swing with my hammer, I reach back with both hands and I just yell, Hammer time! <laughs> and I summon a whole cloud of spiritual hammers around me, 15 feet in all directions. Those I choose are unaffected. Apparently, I want to kill everyone, so I can't choose not to affect Polka. I'm not going to worry about Juniper. I think she's dead. <laughs> so I'm just going to let her be dead. So everyone in that range has to take a wisdom saving throw uh, or suffer damage. I'll say the hex for wisdom continues because Perfect. I don't think Mandy was going to let that go. The spell save DC is 16. Cool. Uh, I rolled an 11. So the symbiote fails. You both take 24 radiant damage from a screaming, spinning cloud of hammers pummeling your bodies. Makes a lot of sense to me. Is there any obvious or perceptible reaction from this creature to radiant damage? Yes, it seems to shriek and recoil. Now, you get the sense that in terms of vulnerabilities, it's not like it's taking more damage because it's radiant. It seems like it's taking damage because it's radiant. Got it, okay. To be clear, it does take damage from normal things. Right, I right. just guess it might have resistances sure, of sure. some sort. I Maybe. figured, yeah. Mm. As damage hits, the symbiote it. You can see it shriek and recoil, and then from deep within it, you can almost hear just a scream of agony and the cracking of bones. And basically, the rib cage starts to undulate and expand, and you can see that though it's taken damage, it seems to be getting bigger. Suboptimal. That I'm brings us to final form bullshit. The symbiote. So Nut tendril is evolving. It's got to roll a con save for reasons I can't explain. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> it fails. So basically, its turn this round is just going to be dealing with the sort of horror and agony of getting larger. 
it is turning from a medium sized creature to a large sized creature and is basically starting to take up more and more of the south end of the room. As it continues to reshape itself, you see the halberdier's arm is being worked into it. So now it's got like an extra arm and like there's an extra leg. It seems to have fully consumed and repurposed the halberdier. So, top of the round, something exciting happens. You hear footsteps and Polka, I'm going to say, as you're like punching at this horrible monster, you turn to see if that sword guy came back after all. But it's no sword guy, it's Bucky! Yay! Oh. Thank Moonhammer Christ. <laughs> so uh, Bucky runs his way out of an epilogue into the action. So Tyler, if you could please roll me an initiative for Bucky, that'd be great. Oh, Bucky. <laughs> oh. Eight. That's a very Bucky roll. Yeah, so we're going to say that that is literally Bucky coming in and realizing what's going on. So Bucky, you walk in, you see a giant tendril monster growing larger and larger. You see moss KO'd on the ground. You see a giant hippo man fighting butthole, just wailing on this giant creature. What do you say? Like Luke Skywalker in A New Hope, he bursts through the door. My name is Bucky and I'm here to rescue you. You have arrived on the scene. And Ryan, can you please roll me a D6? That's a one. Cool. Thank you. Top of the round, Polka. This thing is getting larger and more in charger. And uh, he seems to like be able to consume things that touch him. And now I know that when he does that, he heals, gets larger, and incorporates them into himself. So I'm going to rethink my strategy here. Now that Butthole is on the scene doing some melee-ish things, I feel like now is the time to disengage. So I'm going to back up as much as possible without sacrificing damage dealing potential. I'll let you disengage as an action, and then you can take a few steps back. It means you won't be able to fire this turn, but you won't take any opportunity attacks. Mm, okay. I guess I'm going to have to stay in his grill and see if I can get the pick into the fray. Do I have to disengage from the grapple first? I will give you a devil's bargain on this. If you want to try and put a boot up, boot off him, and try and fire as you fly backward... I'll let you do it. It'll give you disadvantage and you'll be prone, but you will be at distance. I have to do it because it looks cool. And what's more, I mean, this is another opportunity for me to use Bernice and her special little ability there. So rather than even doing the boot up, I can do a rocket, rocket jetpack spring, and great. then do a shot as I do that. So because you're using the rocket spring, I will take away the disadvantage. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> you're better at it. Oh, just honestly, like you've flown on Bernice air several times. Yeah, yes, I have. Cool. All right. So uh, I'll get you to roll me an athletic check just to make sure that you're keeping a handle on Bernice as this all happens. In theory, this is something I'm good at, but twice now trying to use Bernice as an athletics has not gone well. So here we go. Let's buck some odds. Yeah, that's 25. You're blasted back into the air in just a remarkably dexterous thing for a giant hippo man. You manage to do that shotgun reload that people do where you just like swing the gun around and Bernice is locked and loaded. So, yep, go ahead and take your shot. Considering the guy who tripped on a table runner a minute ago, this is pretty good. <laughs> uh, so that is an 11 on a nat one. Oh, buddy. Uh, I had a couple 20s today. What's your damage? That would be D10 plus four. So you spring up, you lock and load. It's everything you dreamed it would be in slow motion. But when you pull the trigger, you feel something click and you remember that Yumi 2 fucked with your weapons and maybe he had some other tricks up his sleeve. So the bolt fires backward into your chest. Cool. Uh, you'll take 14 points of damage from Bernice betraying you and you think somewhere a very, very dead man is laughing at you. So that brings us to Quinny. This is going great, you guys. Yeah, we're, it's we're doing good. great. Yeah, it's fine. I, I think I got a... <laughs> don't look at me. Oh God, don't look at me. Um... What's Quinny going to do? Bucky's arrived. Quinny doesn't really give a shit about Bucky. <laughs> um, like, like, it's good that he's there. We need the backup kind of thing. But Juniper's still down. Butthole is still mind controlled. Quinny will reach out to the one of many faces. You hear the dial tone and like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> You've reached the one of many faces. We'll put you through the moment one of those faces is available. <laughs> Average wait time, 23 minutes. So Manny responds, oh, yes, Quinny, it's, it's been a while. Do you need my help? <sighs> yeah, look, I've got a real big present for you if I can kill this guy, but I need a win here. I need my friend back. And what will you offer me in return? I have found that you haven't been as, as loyal of late. It seems you've been enjoying your freedom a bit too much. Well, first off, I claimed Archibald Tingler's. That's right. The Archibald Tingler's soul in your name. Oh, that is good. So that's already coming to you. And then he's got this new jam going on, which I'm going to send to you as well. I do enjoy new jam. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the jam. <laughs> Come on and slam. <laughs> oh my God. Archibald Tingler's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this alone. Well, you've offered me some great gifts, Quinny, but I'm currently expanding my roster. So I tell you what, the dragon who just came in, he seems quite powerful. Uh, if you get him to sign on the dotted line, I'll give you the information you need. Deal. 
your mind is flooded. You suddenly, very like Neo in the Matrix, come to understand some of the properties of what's going on. The interesting thing is you get the sense that Manny doesn't understand technology either, but is able to draw on eldritch horrors okay. to um, guide your hand. So I'm going to give you two successes, completing your success wheel. So you now understand that injecting Bobbert with the serum will likely break the control. I Oh, his fucking thing of hammers is up. I can't run to him because if I go into that, I take damage before I can do anything, right? But like your friend might die. I'm not just going to throw my life away. So I'll get a little crafty. In my burglar's pack, I've got some string. I'm just going to take the vial and needle out of the injector gun. So it's just a vial with a needle on the end. Tie it to an arrow, mm -hmm. load it into my handheld crossbow and shoot butthole. <laughs> Roll me a ranged attack. <laughs> Butthole's back is to me, yes? Yep. And I take advantage. Butthole, you're currently summoning... I've just summoned the whole so he's, hammer guardian yeah, thing. Yeah, so he's probably not moving too much. So yes, I will give you oh, advantage. Amazing. 20 to hit Butthole. Um, I'm going to switch over to Bucky <laughs> and use Bend Luck. Spend two sorcery points to give somebody else 1d4 and apply it to that roll. That's four, so that's 24 to hit. Yes, you will hit. That's lucky, because my AC is 21, so if you stuck <laughs> it at 20, it would have bounced. <laughs> or uh, just shattered against your armor, like, oh, I'll, fuck, what have I I'd like to imagine Bucky's just like, I don't know what you're doing, Mr. Quinny, but I assume shooting Mr. Butthole will help. Oh, I already have it. Bucky looks at Quinny with, the, like, a needle and injector. Like, he doesn't fully grasp that mm -hmm. shit, but it must be the one-hit KO for this demon that Quinny's obviously aiming for. <laughs> 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 you can do it, Mr. Quinny! Uh, and then he shoots <laughs> Butthole. So the... File hits butthole in the back, manages to pierce his armor. Quinny, you've seen his armor enough to know where the weak spots are, yeah. mostly from when he re-hammered it out. So, butthole, can you please roll me a constitution save? 21. Your body suddenly feels very cold, sort of spreading out from your back, and it feels as though things are crawling under your skin, and your body kind of spasms a bit, but slowly your mind begins to unfog. And for perhaps the very first time in your life, you just have a sense of complete freedom. There's suddenly a lack of this sort of ominous control that you feel coded to your very core. And suddenly you just don't want to kill your friends anymore. I fart loud and long and joyously. And I, I raise my voice and I just sing, oh, it's a good day for me. <laughs> <laughs> Juniper is still bleeding yeah, to death. Yeah. <laughs> but all. And I point to Juniper and I say, fix it. <laughs> and I just like give him a little salute. <laughs> cool. So Quinny and Butthole, I'm going to give you each one point of inspiration. Butthole for Tasty Tasty Freedom and Quinny for saving your friend. Damning an innocent soul to hell. Cool. Cool, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That should be rewarded, I think. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Juniper, please roll me a death save. Sure thing. Not 20. All right, you're Ooh. good. Amazing. Uh, if I roll a 20, I regain one hit point. Great. You so I'm at one. Hit point. Bucky, you're up. I think Bucky would be shocked that Quinny would shoot Butthole, but for the Butthole to react that way of being like, this is a great day and like seemingly pretty pleased about it, Bucky puts that aside. Bucky's not a big thinker. Bucky's more <laughs> of a feeler. That's why we get along. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to run up to Butthole because you're within like melee range of this thing, right? Yes. I choose for Bucky to not be harmed or slowed by the field oh, of hammers. thank you. Bucky runs up and gives you a great big hug and in giving you a hug, makes contact with you and casts enlarge or reduce and he chooses enlarge. <laughs> <laughs> you increase in size by one full unit. Basically. So I'm also so, a large creature. Yeah, so you're right. also a large creature. Mechagodzilla versus Mothra. Yeah, right exactly. here. In All the right. kaiju fight. And he hugs you and like whispers like, go get him, Mr. Butthole. And uh, <laughs> I just a lot of back. sensual whispering yeah. happening I like right to now. imagine this is like as you're finishing the note of good day. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, and then he's picking me up. and I'm like, this is a great day <laughs> for all of us. Until the spell ends, which is one minute, you will have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws and your weapons have also increased in size so you deal an extra 1d4 damage nice butthole you're a giant now i just go it's time for you and i to dance not dead <laughs> <laughs> so now a giant spiritual hammer <laughs> swings out of the sky looking really cool and then it looks like we can double tap him because it's like i'm swinging but the hammer swings first and i go so it's got one of those cool delayed hit looks to it if it had a sound effect it'd be like <laughs> yeah exactly but like farts Okay, so that spiritual hammer is an 11. So we could have done better. Nope. And then I swing. 26 to hit. Yes, that'll hit. Nine regular damage and four. For radiant damage. Is yep. he in your field of hammers if you're wailing on him? Yeah, it affects the start of his turn. Oh, not his mine. Turn, That's okay. why I couldn't cast another spell, because it's concentration. Which brings us to Archibald. Yeah, so it's got to take a wisdom save. A disadvantage. 
Okay, fails. Wonderful. 10 radiant damage. As the field of hammers affects it, you see the creature undulate again. It continues to grow. It seems to be growing faster, but it's grown more chaotic. And through glimpses of it, you can see fleshy bits. Like you can tell it's expanding rapidly, but also growing less and less controlled. So who's in melee range? That'd be me and Polka. Cool. So I'll have you both roll me either a constitution save or a dexterity save to kind of get out of the way as the tendrils just start whipping out. I'm going to do con. I'm just going to try to like shove it off. Uh, Constitution as well. Cool. That's a nat 20. Amazing. That's also a nat 20. (laughs) Give me that high five right there. That's fucking awesome. That was all right. So as time slows, you both see an opportunity to leap out of the way. Bucky's yelling, (laughs) shoo. But you both decide that this fight is too critical. So I'm going to give you each a bonus turn for rolling 20s on your con saves. Ryan, I'm going to let you roll with advantage. Dave, I'm not going to give you advantage, but I'm going to use that instead to say that's you looking for fleshy bits. So if you can (laughs) manage to pick your targets correctly, you'll be able to actually deal full damage rather than resistance damage. Dave, why don't you go first? So we're going to ball pick. Here we go. That's 29. Yeah. You see an actual nut. Yeah. (laughs) It makes sense because the nuts keep getting bigger. So go ahead and roll your damage, sir. All right. 14. You like swing the pick up under and you feel kind of gain traction and you start dragging him towards butthole. What do you say to set him up for this? Nuts out for Moonhammer. Here we go. Amazing butthole. Is it just me or is it me and Spiritual Hammer if it's my, if it's a I'm turn? just going to give it to you, not, okay, not fair enough. Spiritual Hammer. So it's got all the power, but you're just hearing that like fart, 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 fart. <laughs> it's like the butt in the hammer is breathing in and out. Like it has to inhale to do the farts. Oh, and I just fucking give it everything I get. And at the same time, I open my mouth <laughs> releasing the powers of Moonhammer because yeah. the nuts were out for Moonhammer. They were. Uh, and you just hear like hot, 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 hot. And then the hammer hits with a 29. Yep, 29 will do. Six regular damage and two radiant damage. As Polka drags the sort of symbiote monster towards you, just for the briefest second, you can see the sort of twisted, stretched out David Lynch, Cronenberg monster face of your father. And as you you swing your hammer in to destroy him, what do you say? Normally you tell me what to do. (laughs) Now I'm telling you, die ugly. (laughs) And your hammer just sinks deep into the creature and you see like the stretched out father face, like Archibald's eyes go blank and you realize you've killed the host. Suddenly the symbiote screams, undulates, and bursts, throwing bloody tendrils everywhere. But as soon as they hit the ground away from the host, they dry up and crumble. And the creature spits tendrils and gore and slowly puddles down to nothing, leaving just the shredded corpse of Archibald and the shredded corpse of the Halberdier. (laughs) R.I.P. in peace. (laughs) Uh, And thus ended the life of Archibald Tingler. And I'm still sad and confused and giant so i reach down with giant hands and i pick up a very little juniper i'm i'm awake oh you're now. awake now yeah still you need this but i'm it, like i pick you I'm up not and i'm doing like great. i've got to bring you back from the dead you need <laughs> this and then i swing her around to where oh. my butt is oh. And I put He's her very no, big. I put no, her face against no, the no, giant butthole. Because no. she can actually the best part of this magic is I'm so big I can fit her face just inside. No. You're right, that so is I, the best part. I, yeah. I, I, no. <laughs> I push her in and then I cast cure wounds at level no. four on her. So I fart and it's a gale wind no. that like <laughs> fills fills her up sort of like a balloon a little bit. Cause it's all magic, so her body can handle it. I mean, you, you let, hear me, let me change that noise and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You hear like the trumpets of Moonhammer. The foulest bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> and you're healed for 34 HP through the fart winds of Moonhammer coming from my giant anus. And then I set you down and go, good job. And then slowly you <laughs> shrink down to regular size. You're looking so tiny from up here. Oh, this is actually, I. Uh, you, you're doing better <laughs> oh. now. Quinny, do you need I, oh. healing? I can't put you in, but like we'll do like the next best thing. Can I just run dash to Quinny and lay on hands? And I, I feel like Quinny's like, I'm good to butthole. It's like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I just like Juniper. run over it. So you gain a 23. Amazing. HP. Thank you. So you're standing in the room. You've ended the reign of Archibald Tingler and managed to wrest control of butthole back from powers beyond his control. So I almost murdered everyone. Um here and I take out the hammer and I go down on one knee and I just offer it. Anybody who wants to end this Quinny will stop you like right there. Just like stop butthole stop. You were not in control of your actions. We knew that and I don't think any of us laid a hand on you because we knew that this isn't what you wanted. So it's fine. It's fine. 
Does everybody else feel that way? I am going to run over and just give you a hug. Butthole. This is the way of things. Really surprised by that, considering that he just farted directly <laughs> in your face. That speaks to a kink level that I didn't know that we had going on here. But uh, I feel so much better now. Good, good. It is uh, nature's way. Do you want me to fart on you, Polka? I'll, I'll do I it. I super don't, but thank you. Uh, you guys are all weird, but you did help me get back my syndicate. Yeah, I guess you're the leader now. Yeah. I guess I am. So here's the question. Are you going to go full dictator in the city is yours and then we have to fight you? Or what's your plan now that technically we've accidentally given you absolute power? TBD, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I'm generally not that guy. So, to say nothing of the fact that we've got a whole bunch of gray hands with laser rifles kicking around in the city right now. So we're not exactly in a secure position just yet. Well, so. I mean, they're on their way out. So sure. if they're going, then we can get you to water deep. I think we probably need to rest. I don't know how you guys are doing i don't even know where to go from here (sighs) okay do you know what we can figure that out just let me do one more thing and i want to go over to my dad's body quinny wants to go with you great quinny's going with me and i want to look for his hands if there's one anywhere sure yeah and i want to take the signet ring of the family because he's you know the patriarch of the tingler family and i can do a lot with that because that's the symbol of rule and control in the tingler realm And I'm going to claim that. And I just look down at the body and I take the ring. And then I think I just sit in this like giant pile of gore. And there's sort of his head. And I just hold the ring in my hands and I'm just going to look at him. Because a lot of this journey has been in direct opposition to him. And now that that's done, I don't really know what to do. Because my mom is evil, but my dad was like the commanding evil. My dad was the one who could tell me what to do, who controlled my whole existence. And like freedom is scary in some ways because freedom seems purposeless in a lot. So I'm just sitting there. While Butthole and Quinny go to the other side of the room, I change back into Juniper and I pull out my scroll. Please just let this be the end. As you open it, to your surprise, there's deep crimson letters. It's never been colored before Mm. that just say the great collide is nigh. And then beneath it in the sort of standard curling script, it says prepare. All right. I just (laughs) put it back in my pocket. So Butthole, you're you're staring down at your father and kind of having a, a moment of reflection. And all of a sudden something nudges you from the side and you just hear, snarf? And then the world makes sense again because (laughs) Goblin Jr. is here. And sometimes you feel like you don't have any family left because they're all murderers. But then you have a wolf of Moonhammer who is also a murderer, (laughs) but he's the good murderer like me. And I reach out and I just wrap him in a hug. And with all my faith in the world and him, I cast Lesser Restoration and his stitched on goblin leg grows fur. Green fur. <laughs> um, so with that, our camera kind of pans up to an overview of the city still smoking from the battle below. A few days pass in that time. Polka, you're able to regain control of the city. You've received word that your message got through to Waterdeep. The siege has been called off. And essentially now as the commander of the Greywater Syndicate and kind of a coalition of mercenaries, you're now actually a very powerful figure on the world stage. More importantly, word comes in from Bryn that with the public announcement of the death of Archibald Tingler and the loss of both Neverwinter and Waterdeep, the advance of the Unseen Hands forces and the armies of Akka has been halted. And an uneasy Cold War style tension has fallen over the land. So... The dragon cult is still active across the sea. However, with the loss of the Archbishop of Tempest, the forces of the God of War are scattered. There's no clear leader other than Lady Antebellum. Rumors have it that there's a, a bit of a, a secession war happening to find out who will take take on the helm. So you have a couple days to actually rest and reflect on everything. A raven appears with a message from the field that, unfortunately, there have been casualties to your war party. In the course of the action, Yevgenovich has died. Annan and Paladin von Strauss are missing, but there seem to be reports that a boisterous orc warlord seems to have appeared on the field and is requesting an audience. For the first time, you have options. So first and foremost, Polka, you get to decide where you want to throw the forces of Greywater. The way this is basically going to work is as we move into overworld war territory, there are a variety of things that you can decide to do in consultation with these guys or of your own volition. So, for instance, you can use the troops to reinforce Waterdeep, you can reinforce Neverwinter, you can attempt to seize more territory. What would you like to do? Neverwinter and Waterdeep are big economic hubs for the Sword Coast. So, if where they go, kind of that's where the region's going to go. So, keeping the Unseen Hand out of that area is probably smartest. I would need to maintain a pretty strong Greywater presence in Neverwinter, seeing as 
because otherwise my force is only a whole bunch of other mercenaries that are not mm-hmm. necessarily loyal to me. But then everything else that I have, I think you'd have to throw down there in the southern front to okay. make sure that the lines are held. So can you please roll me 5d20 and tell me each result? Result 1, 11. Okay. 8, 3, 10. 14. So with your three successes out of five, you manage to successfully establish a front. So basically, Greywater has shored up the front as well as reinforcing specifically Neverwinter. Um, Waterdeep had defenders. They were mostly concerned about the siege that you were carrying out. So now that the troops have pulled back, they are well secured. So with those successes, I will say the Sword Coast is now a secured territory. So with that, the Dum Dums prepare to reembark on the SS McSquigley. But before you go, you have a chance to bid farewell to Polka, your new erstwhile ally. It was a weird time, but uh, I want to say thank you for rescuing me from a pit, helping me kill you, me too, securing me as the leader of Greywater Syndicate and helping me rule basically the Sword Coast unopposed. That was really kind of you guys. I appreciate that. He kind of owes us. Yeah, I really shouldn't have framed (laughs) it in that way. Uh, I want to say you're welcome (laughs) for helping you get out of the bind that you guys were in, securing all of your objectives in Neverwinter and killing Archibald Tingler. You're welcome. You owe us. (laughs) <laughs> For sure you do. Anyway, yeah, free, free drinks anytime sometime. you're in town, man. Anytime, day or night. Don't hesitate to ask for the free drinks. Yeah. I just have to clarify, when we first met, you told us your name. I laughed. It wasn't a laugh <laughs> at your name. It was a laugh of joy because I think it's wonderful and you're fantastic. And I just don't want that to be hanging in the air forever. Yeah, the revenge is coming. It's just going to be really, <laughs> really subtle. And you're not even going to know when it's going to appear. Well, I, I look forward to it. You should. It's going to be great. Billy Fingers will come out and you notice that some Suddenly, he has four slender fingers that you've never seen and a thumb. He ate Alan's hand. Yeah, he sure did. So he walks up and he taps you on the shoulder and then he gives you like rock and roll horns and a thumbs up and then he hops off and skitters away. And then I approach last and I'm somber and I just say, thank you for joining the team. Thank you for everything that you've done. And as one mercenary to another, I just have to remind you that we all agreed we all got equal shares in everything we found and took. So technically, each of us are a 25% share shareholder in the Greywater Syndicate. <laughs> so if you fuck around, we can vote you out. <laughs> oh man, am I a general now? No, you are not. He is the general. Right now. Stupid armies are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> if you can convince two of us to agree that you're the general, then you're the general. But until that day, you're just quitting. <laughs> So it's been a pleasure. Wish this wasn't ending because I love sharing a quarter of a mercenary company with you. And yeah. then I reach up and put one hand on each of his cheeks and I just make out with him. So close and so intimate in the gray water way. We'll always have Neverwinter. Exactly. Which is difficult because I have a gigantic hippo mouth. <laughs> I got a lot of tongue and I know how to use it. Uh, so girthy. I'm going to make this work. It takes some time. This is minutes long. <laughs> like I realize because your mouth is so big, normally you have to hit a certain number of teeth in a certain order, but then you're a hippo. So I like buy some time because I don't really know how many teeth you have so i have to like count them all with the kiss and then i got to do some math and then like i get in there and we do the right amount of like butt cheek grabbing it's during like an the exploratory kiss. make out yeah honestly it starts there and then it shifts into gray water and then the gray water kiss is sort of done and i'm there and i'm not quite pulling back but i felt like you haven't really like committed 100 percent. so i'm not sure if we're gonna keep making out the entire length of the song careless whisper is how long <laughs> this oh, is gonna that's keep not going. a short song bucky, no it is not bucky's playing it in the background just vocalizing <laughs> na, 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 na. i finish kissing Polka and I pull back and I rest a hand on his shoulder and I say it's time to welcome our new co-owners and I walk over and I put a hand on each side of Quinny's face and I no, just no, start no, stop, making stop. out with him in the gray water style you can pick Quinny up like by the head because he's so small but Quinny's feet will kind of come up and press your <laughs> cheeks away from his face I know and do you know what that just feels like you're trying to hit the right teeth because you don't know the order yet and then when, when that's over I set you down and I just say welcome aboard brother which is a weird term for us to use for each other with all the making out, but we do anyways. Yeah. You got your matching scars from before and everything. I and I look back and see Polka and Juniper. Are they kissing? No, I'm never gonna dance again. <laughs> Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Juniper, have you ever been kissed? Yes. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say we haven't. No, had, no, ju- yeah, yeah. We haven't had like a yeah. long wagon ride where we could talk about this yet. I mean, that used to be how we got all of our backstory <laughs> and exposition. No, J- Juniper's lived. Yeah, great. All right, cool. When your guys' kiss is over, I'm like, okay, so I think you guys are great starters, but we're gonna teach you how to really get the gray water kissing done. But like, thumbs up. And then I look down and I realize, oh, I forgot. 
Goblin Jr., technically, you own 10% of this company because we said you'd get a smaller part. So then I, I leaned down and kissed Goblin Jr., but like very gently on the nose because I don't think he needs that full experience. Oh, the dog doesn't. Got no, it. no, he's he's a good boy. The rest of us are not good boys. <laughs> Bucky, Bucky's uh, kissing his hand. Quinny, as you recover from this, you check your pack. You've still got the data slab. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say you have the empty injector, but also you see a cleanly folded scroll with a wax seal on it. Uh, On my person? Yep. I open it. It's blank, except for a line at the bottom with an X next to it. And your devil's sight undulates a little bit. Mm. And uh, you know what this is, but also that it's been left blank so that you can make it whatever you need it to be. I roll it up and I look at Bucky, just that sweet summer child of an idiot, kissing his hand. And I make a personal vow. I'm going to fucking kill the one of many faces. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, our special guest, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra. And Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are, and now for that massive coronary, and skipping through the orchestra pit part one by Peter Gresser. And our ad music is no Control and Chiefs by Jazzar. J A H Z Z A R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D U M B D U M B D I C E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and Dragons. Thank you.